tech media subscribe to your youtube channel and like your facebook page you know i was your speaker of parliament right honorable abel uh aban kenford smiley babin wabeka sir now you name say ntbr and a speaker a suspended parliament and i know what you know and i want to call your central for a dm come on and in seven you know and he said uh waka sa edifa comment to be more i could cause a seven other than go to father can say or be handy over eddie ama a year mpp now i say now you'll be handy over sazo so and a brand a tampon honorable and so ever can be yeah the union and he said mpp will not have over to the ndc no no more and a waka sa no see or you're disappointed pa na nini na muno wada nado dan kwa kufu wadu eni mide when you send nado dan kwa kufu wadu eyo bia a wakone ni mpa yi na nana kufu wadu onven e hu se eye pa wana nase tu mine ikrano eye te mwe mufuwa ni pa ena ede emano na sisi ya krano se kwa base e bia na ye bia ya na jese nyadia or what to me be a nanya or yen yina and he says a cobasa na a year doctor mamudu bomia fish or a year his excellency john romani mahama and a crass to me no nipa nina bakwa kudi wamo me you know echi nanya waka ene bia na jese a year ankure hunu bia sabi 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 a year didi wakana kwa wakana wa wakana ratra sabi na a year nimbebi and a na uja and he says a cobasa e bia ya reni aba na ya mfama dia or ya very disappointed and he was shocked to hear the president of the republic i hear the president of kwame nkrumah youth and i feel so and the various uh, political parties are joining any niyama any uh, various uh, associations are uh, joining and they will be in a no i can say in the same way now edomo and all the corporate champions so koko chile mse brana champion you'll be a sabi 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 on your experience no no crown parliament crown a very scarce in yadia i want more a tie a who know now over chile mse brana champion you'll be a one year jumada uh, service service public sector you are near to my order we anything about governance we need to be be a name um no a year to know at all and a year man so many never got in a sector so on congo handle a sector a whole sector and a one year when you also a cabinet minister and the brand champion the energy say you can now one who need to be a i was here of course what is the same people in one i can't say in the same way no more that is a now a year speaker to say in fact now and yama and queen i'll be sana sam for a john dramani mahama and send you okay boot for boot and it's a and yama and say uh 26 2024 yeah by the nc 2020 maybe ac beam i'll tell you more equity more equity i'm caught nothing in going video number the bar about to also subscribe with your youtube channel and like your facebook video Gift Tech Media. Clearly, His Excellency the President, who started politics at a very early age because of his parents, and who was what an activist in the CPP party, grew up to be the president of Kwame Nkrumah Youth Forum, and after the 66 election, joined the United Party, Progress Party, now MPP, to come out after all that experience, a legal luminary, to say such a thing. That is inciting people to violence. Okay. That even if we lost the election, we will not hand over. We will do all we can to hold on to power. That is unacceptable. I was really shocked to hear that because His Excellency the President knows that the power he's holding is not his. It's for the people, particularly the voters. And the people voted and gave him that power. Once they vote you out, they, he even is ending mm -hmm. his eight years period. At the 6th of January 2025, His Excellency Nana Adu Danko Akufu Adu has no such power. He knows that that if he orders the CDS on the 7th of January 1990 to do anything, he will not do it. My understanding of what you're saying, really... He has no such power, so it's just an empty boast. Brutum fulmin. He cannot. He will not have that power. It's a person that the people have now voted for that have been given the power. And though the people are looking at that person, not him. So either is His Excellency John Dramani Mahama or His Excellency Dr. Uh, uh, Mahmoud Baumia. Mahmoud Baumia. You do not think so that... that those are the people that will have power, and those are the people that Ghanaians will now be listening to, not to him. So he has nothing, not even an empty shell. What we do is just a ceremony to show that power has now shifted from the former to the newly elected person. You do not think that those comments were deep expressions of, I really wish that Baumia would, would take over the reins of power for me? You just said it. What prevented him from using that same language? If I... Oh, it's my wish that MPP should win the elections and Baumia me will take over from me but if you go and say categorically i will not hand over power i see the power is still in your hands <laughs> but by that time it's not in his hands you just gave his history there where he started from before he even became president yeah would you say that that comment was irresponsible and he's repeated it 
Well, His Excellency knows better, you know. In mature democracies, they will take actions more than what we will do. That would have soiled all his record as a politician, you know. And all those descriptions people make of him in terms of law and the defense of human rights or the media and also his record as a president. This cancels out all. It doesn't show that he's a Democrat and that he believes in multi-party democracy. If I hear what you're saying, you were disappointed when very, you heard that. Very, very. In fact, it was, I was shocked. It was at least expected His Excellency to say such a thing. But in addition to that, you just brought to the fore again a statement made by Brian Champon, and he's repeated it. He's a member of parliament, a parliament you oversee. Have you done anything about it? How do you see that, first of all? Brian Champon is scarcely in parliament. You see, that is another thing that we have to do. You see, political leadership is a different ball game. You just don't trust untried and untested hands straight from birth into leadership position. How do you they mean? have to be groomed, they have to be tutored, they have to be mentored, they have to grow to it. They must have hands-on experience. And so the system we are running is a system that is damaging the growth of this country. Brian doesn't where have the experience. People, where? In politics? Zero. He just elected as a member of parliament and has made a cabinet minister. He has no knowledge about the public sector, about governance, about politics, and he is now going to lead the whole sector. He has never handled such power before and therefore they think that they are the alpha and the omega so you think that's what's that is, influencing that how what, he's behaving not only him a number a number of our people in politics now you know as they grow they will learn that what they did were wrong M mean. and they were really undermining their own authority and relevance won't it be too late very late, and that's one of the causes of our underdevelopment. Many countries, many, many countries who have made it have taken the time to evolve. And the evolution is not only about systems, it's also about human beings. And so we just don't take those decisions lightly, that you're given the opportunity to lead the country. If you want to bring up definitely there's growth, there's replacement, we must always go with the youth, we must go with everybody, but you give them the position to grow, okay? Once we keep on just cutting, cutting corners and doing what is happening now, we can never develop as a nation. We can never develop as a nation, you say. Uh, we are talking about inflammatory comments and languages or language ahead of this year's general election. And I know uh, that you also heard the bit said by the former president, John Mahama, who is leading the opposition NDC. When he said, and he said it a number of times as well, that we will make sure that this election is not stolen and this time we are not going to court. How did you understand this comment? The first part deals with vigilance and ensuring that the right thing is done. That this time around, what happened in 2020, where brute force was used at some stations to take away the decision of the people, we will not allow that to happen again. Mm. Which meant that there's a loss of trust in the process and in the Electoral Commission. And so if the Electoral Commission is not going to take up the mantle together with the other stakeholders, particularly the security agents led by the Ghana Police Service, and note, it is not Ghana Police Force, it is Ghana Police Service. And they are to deal with the maintenance of law and order. And you don't just maintain law and order by force. No, that is not it. But unfortunately, that is where we are. And they are the key institution to maintain law and order. The military has no business when we are doing elections to be present until law and order breaks down and they are called in. So you want them to stay off? Completely. I have stated it a number of times that we would not want to see our military moving around. They have to be at positions that could be, they could be called to intervene when the need arises. But already you know that the military have been deployed. I mean, officials have been deployed to border towns to enforce even this ban on uh, exportation of the country's grains because of the drought in seven regions of the country. And that is catastrophic and a complete exaggeration of the situation. Just to create a platform to go in for a facility. And who knows how that facility will be applied. That is my honest view. What do you mean by facility? A credit facility in terms of money or in terms of food items, is that kind of thing? The NDC thinks it's an attempt to intimidate voters around that place. You see, you, you, people really don't understand the situation we are in. The Ghanaian voter can no longer be intimidated. We saw what happened in Kenya. We saw what happened in Nigeria. Ghana is not immune to it. I was a young man in Legon during the regime of President General Akeya Champong. And that was the time they brought in the Muwaks 
to support the police. They were blue in color. We faced the Muwaks with our bodies, not even with the empty hand. Some of us were killed, but we fought and managed to turn this country to democratic Ghana. The people are not afraid of the military. How many are they in this country? How many are the people? How many bullets do they have? How many were they killed? How many of them will survive? We've seen it before from country to country. So if there's any intention of using the military to threaten and intimidate the voter, they better think twice.